What's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got some more NBA news to talk about. This time actually revolving around Kevin Love and the Cleveland Cavaliers with it currently being reported that the Cavaliers will likely revisit trade discussions around Kevin Love this offseason per Cleveland.com. They are looking for young talent and draft picks as compensation. So, look, as a, as a Cleveland Cavaliers fan, I'm going to straight away say this. I actually don't know if we're, if, you know, necessarily the Cavs are going to be able to get a deal done for Kevin Love in the offseason. And I just don't think that there are really any teams out there that are willing to, you know, kind of meet the demands of the Cavaliers and how they kind of want to go about it. So, again, I'm not exactly too sure. And a lot of people are kind of on this as well, where a lot of people also don't think the Cavs are going to be able to get a Kevin Love deal done. And, you know, some people think that it's not, you know, it's because that nah, a lot of teams aren't wanting to trade for Kevin Love because of his contract. I can pretty much, like, literally guarantee that that's not the reason at all. I think it's actually more of the Cavs and Kobe Altman not wanting to pull the trigger unless they get the right deal because a lot of people still know that Kevin Love would be a great third star slash third piece to be on literally like most teams in the NBA. He is still very very, very good. I mean, he's a great rebounder. He's a great shooter. He's a great interior scorer. He's just not exactly the greatest defender. And obviously, yeah, his contract is maybe probably five or so million, uh, probably too expensive on what he should actually be getting paid. But again, there are definitely a lot of teams that people are, you know, kind of suggesting on potential trades. And I'm actually going to read over him here. So some people were saying that he's on his way to Houston. I don't necessarily know if that's going to be the right decision because Houston are kind of wanting this real small ball type of lineup that can space the floor extremely fast and run down the court. And I don't necessarily know if Kevin loves really exactly that. I mean, if he's going to get the rebound for, you know, Houston, I guess, then he's not exactly going to be getting up the court, you know, literally straight away like PJ Tucker pretty much does. And that's why, you know, PJ Tucker is actually pretty decent on about that. And again, he lacks the defense that I'd say the Houston Rockets definitely need at that center position. And even though PJ Tucker's not exactly probably going to be the best defender at center, I still don't know if Kevin Love is really the answer for the whole Houston situation. One, you know, one trade that I actually really, you know, kind of like was some someone actually suggested that the Cavs get back Romeo Langford, Carson Edwards, and a first round pick. Look, I don't exactly like that trade at all. Actually, in fact, I think that trade is actually pretty bad. The Cavs do definitely don't need those two players. But the part of, you know, the Boston Celtics that I kind of like is a potential trade where the Cavs can get maybe a first-round pick back and, you know, that Gordon Haywood contract that is definitely, you know, very overpriced. And I think it could actually work for, obviously, both teams. For example, currently on, you know, the Boston Celtics right now, they don't necessarily have a power forward. I mean, Jason Tatum's been playing power forward for the majority of the season. And I think that Jason Tatum's been playing that role actually very, very good. And same with Tyus playing that center, you know, type of position. But I feel like for Jason Tatum, he could literally, there's not really a way to, you know, kind of tell this. But if Jason Tatum runs his more traditional small forward type of position and they actually bring in a power forward, I think that would be extremely interesting. For example, Gordon Haywood is running small forward with Tatum at power forward, but currently this season, Haywood is averaging 17.3 points per game, 6.5 uh, rebounds, rather, 4.1 assists on 33.4 minutes per game on 39%. Look, those are some very good numbers, but he is going to be getting paid about $31 million on the season. Well, you know, for Kevin Love, Kevin Love's numbers are obviously, you know, ext extremely way better. I mean, he's averaging 16 or 17.6 points per game, rather, on 31.8 minutes per game. And he's averaging 9.8 rebounds, 3.2 assists, and 37.4% from three. Now, the reason why I'm saying, you know, I'm saying his numbers are better is because his minutes are, you know, a little bit lower. I think, I believe they're a couple minutes lower than what Gordon Haywood's are. But he's averaging those 9.8 rebounds per game that I definitely think could come in clutch with, you know, the Boston Celtics. And it just does give them, you know, some extra high. And one thing I like as well is Kevin Love, uh, Kevin Love is doing that on the Cleveland Cavaliers without a pretty, you know, dominant playmaker. Like, I mean, when he had LeBron James, he was averaging 18 points per game on way less shots. And it's, you know, some people were saying, well, his production's gone now because he's got gotten older. 
I don't think that's the case at all. I think his production's gone down a little bit because he doesn't have a, you know, major playmaker with him. I mean, he's got Darius Garland, who's extremely young and is only learning his craft in the NBA. But if he was to go to the Boston Celtics, then he automatically gets a couple of really nice playmakers. So, yes, his shots would go down, but he's going to get a lot more open shots on that three-point line. And, yeah, he's probably going to average the same amount of points, but his, um, but his shooting numbers, you know, on shots taken per game are probably going to drop a little bit. But, yeah, again, as I said, he's going to be averaging most likely the same amount of points per game. And I think he could bring in, you know, a lot of boards. I mean, that 9.8 rebounds per game, that's because he's got Tristan Thompson and Andre Drummond and Larry Nance all on his team to, you know, compete with. But if you put him on the Boston Celtics, he's going to be competing with, for rebounds against, you know, Daniel Tice, which again, he's probably going to average like at least 12 rebounds or so per game. So I think his numbers are going to definitely change if he was to be put on the Boston Celtics. And it's just some, you know, a play that I think would actually be a very good move for them going forward. Now, what would they have to give up? I think it most likely would be Gordon Hayward to obviously match the contracts out. I mean, that makes the most amount of sense. I believe, you know, everyone would think that. I think it would most likely be Gordon Hayward and a first-round pick or something like that. I think, or maybe it could just be Gordon Hayward in a couple seconds. I honestly believe the Cavs might even want to, you know, just do that deal because then they can, you know, they can get Gordon Hayward. They can look to re-sign him in the offseason if they really wanted to. Or they, you know, can potentially... I guess, trade him at the deadline, which again, that could be a kind of option that does actually eventually happen. And look, I think it would actually be a pretty interesting idea to kind of run with the Cavs because the Cavs already got an interior force with Andre Drummond. So if you maybe play Gorn Hayward as that powerful position, then that Cleveland Cavaliers starting five would actually look extremely interesting. Like going forward, I could definitely see it being Darius Garland at point guard, Kevin Porter Jr. at shooting guard, Either Denny of Deja, if they draft him, and Jetty Osman at the small forward type of position, I guess. Or maybe they would be playing the power forward and Hayward would be playing the small forward. I don't really know. They'd probably be swapping the forward positions on and on. And they've got Andre Drummond, the center. And that defense wouldn't exactly even be bad. You know, Andre Drummond's a pretty good center, uh, you know, at, with defense. Kevin Porter Jr. has the, you know, kind of tools to be a pretty nice defender. J.D. Osmond's a pretty nice, you know, perimeter defender. Again, still needs to work on that interior. That's a pretty similar situation with Gordon Hayward, I guess. So, again, the defense might not exactly be that great, but they've got a lot of de good defensive players that would come off the bench. Tristan Thompson, Larry Nance, Matthew Dallavadova, the potential rumor that they might be signing Derek Jones Jr. Again, that Cleveland Cavaliers team would actually start to look pretty nice with these additions, but honestly, I still don't know if they should pull the trigger on that. I think, you know, their main goal is to get a first-round pick or so, and if they can't get a first-round pick out of that, then I don't necessarily know if that is uh, going to be exactly the greatest thing at all. But, yeah, a lot of people are still saying Portland and the Nets. I think the Nets would actually be a very... Well, obviously, the Nets for them. That would be a great player to bring in. I mean, they don't have a power forward at all right now that should be, you know, really the main starter. I mean, there's a lot of rumors that Kevin Durant is going to be starting at that powerful position because a lot of people don't know if Torrain Prince um, is the right man to be doing it. Again, I think I'd rather have, you know, maybe Prince at powerful and KD at small forward. I think he operates better there. But bringing in, you know, potentially Kevin Love would really solve that issue and would make it so much better. But the issue with this is, I don't think the Cavs would get anything back in that they would necessarily be too kind of happy about. Like, I mean, the Nets, to kind of make this deal get done, would probably have to trade Karis LeVert and maybe Torrain Prince or so and something like that for Kevin Love. But I don't really think, you know, the Cleveland Cavaliers need Karis LeVert. I mean, LeVert is a wing player. But the Cavaliers will most likely be drafting a player like Denny of Deja. They've already got Jetty Osman. They've already got, you know, Colin Sexton who's playing small ball shooting guard. They've already got Kevin Porter Jr. who should be their, you know, starting wing very soon. I would most likely put him at shooting guard. Again, they've got a lot of, you know, wing players, um, especially considering, again, they're most likely going to be getting in Denny of Deja if they draft him and Derek Jones Jr. I just don't know if... Karis LeVert is really the guy that the Cavaliers should be trading for. So, the next one kind of goes down for me, I would probably have to say. But then there's also a lot of people talking about Portland. I think the Cavaliers could actually get some interesting pieces out of Portland. And I still believe they'll be the favorites to kind of go out and get Kevin Love. 
I mean, they've got CJ McCollum, who I don't think is on the max. I think he's on above 20 million or so. Damian Lillard's definitely on the max. Hassan Whiteside, I believe, is on the max right now, but he'll be expiring. I believe they're not going to be bringing him back, which means they'll have a lot of money to spend. Trevor Reza will have one year left on his contract. Come on, Anthony, they can bring back on cheap again. Again, they're probably going to have enough cap. I just don't necessarily know what the Cavaliers would trade for, you know, to, you know, kind of get out of this cold Kevin Love type of package. I feel like they could possibly get maybe Zach Collins, um, maybe Nazir Little and a first round pick or so. They could literally be asking for this year's first round pick. Like, I mean, if the Trailblazers, who are the ninth seed right now, let's just say they land with pick 18 or so, I definitely think the Cavaliers are going to be really trying to get that pick. So, yeah, I definitely would watch that space. I still believe the Trailblazers are going to be the favorites to get Kevin Love as, yeah, they've got that really nice first round pick that I think the Cavs will want. And they'll have cap. They've obviously got, you know, two max contracts right now. Rodney, well, actually, I don't even think um, CJ is on a max. I'm not exactly too sure. He could be, but I'm not exactly too sure. But then they've got Nurkic on about 12 million, Rodney Hood on about 5 million. They could definitely go over, you know, the tax and I guess bring in another um, max contract in Kevin Love. But obviously, there'd be no way they'd be able to bring back Hassan Whiteside, which, again, it already looks like they're not wanting to do right now. And if the cap situation gets too hurt, they, look, they could even try and trade a couple other players here and there as well. Because obviously, yeah, they've got another player on $15 million. I do believe so. Even though he'll be an expiring the season after, I still don't know. But yeah, the Portland Trailbla Trailblazers could definitely be looking at a different, you know, kind of spot. And yeah, Trevor Reza is the dude, is the guy with $15 million on that contract. So again, I think it's going to be extremely interesting to, you know, kind of see how the Cleveland Cavaliers go about this. I still don't think they're going to get a deal done with Kevin Love. I'm, I'm very optimistic, you know, I'm hoping that they can, but again, I'm not exactly too sure. I don't really think they can, but obviously I'm optimistic for a trade. I still think that trading Kevin Love would most likely be the right decision for the Cleveland Cavaliers to do, you know, moving forward. But anyone, to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for the latest NBA content and NBA news. Definitely don't forget to comment in the comment section down below. What are your thoughts and opinions on this? Do you guys think it'd be a good idea for the Cavaliers to trade Kevin Love? Or do you guys think they should keep him? Again, I'd definitely really like to know your thoughts and opinions on this all down below. And who do you guys think they should trade him to? Again, I'd definitely really like to know down below. But also, don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel and my IRL slash vlogging channels. Links for them will all be in the description down below. And definitely don't forget to check out my podcast as well if you haven't already. Links for that will all be in the description down below. So as I was saying, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.